welcome to the Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Crow. Always bet on silver. Mm, I thought that phrase is always bet on red. That species is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then, and also joining us is Tatera. So, who do I place my bet on then, other than silver? You can always place your bet on black. Hmm. Too easy. Too easy. Because you're making this too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, Batman already did that in the Le- his Lego movie. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Tell me, Joker, do you like poker? As a matter of fact, I do. But let me tell you, always bet on black. <laughs> it's funny how that even rhymes, too. Oh, boy. Well, anywho, uh, in today's episode, we are going to review the Nightmare Night Comics issue 2. Or, more specifically, the My Little Pony Nightmare Nights issue number 2. In this issue, Princess Luna and Stygian recruit a group of former villains for their plan heist for Princess Ares Casino. Hmm. I wonder who gonna recruit. There's uh let's see. There's hmm who villains do they have? Oh, the Dazzlings, yeah, those three those three are there. Also there's um Chrysalis, yes, she's there too. And who else? Who else? I could only see Chrysalis working with Trixie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be like them talking with each other, like, yeah. Mm, or talking to themselves. Mm, that'll be interesting. Oh, Lord Tyrek. Oh, yeah, he'll be there. Mm. But anywho, besides um, speculating who's going to be on the team, uh, we are going for first impressions. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, this issue is a is a fun follow up. It's still preparation for the actual heist, so it, I'd argue it's maybe the slowest part of this uh, five part arc because you're just waiting to get things together, not actually initiating the plan, and we want the plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it it finally brings together the group and and has them start to play off one another, which is a lot of fun. However, this is the this is the issue that started raising a very important question about Luna's magic and how much remains. Hmm, all right. We'll get into that soonish. So Yes. Tara, what about you? Well, first impressions I find this decent. I mean, not really the greatest, but not the worst either. Like, like, like it's basically a preparation, uh I almost said episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's a preparation comic, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh did you read the whole thing? I did. Ah, because I remember you were very excited and can't wait to start reading it. You know, I was going to read it on ahead, but then I'm like, you know what? Nah, I'm going to read it once Norman says we're about to, you know, look into it. So that way I could read it on the day you announce it, and then I could read it again as much as I want. Ah, all right. So basically you haven't read part three yet? No. All right. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. You know, I got I to gotta build up the suspense for myself. <laughs> all right, then. So, uh, as for me, this issue was a lot of fun. I like the interaction between uh, the characters, like especially with uh, Tempest. It, it, her her bit is short, but it feels like well, I don't know. It felt okay because there's a line there that I'm sure Silver will love to talk about later on. Wait, hey, Norman, you spoiled it already. Well, Tempest is a villain. <laughs> I think he's talking about a different kind of spoiling. But all things in time. Okay. Yes. So anywho, in if you guys have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Um, hope you enjoy the story because I, I'm sure I did. Uh, so anyway, let's start off with, well, Princess Luna on the balcony looking towards the moon, wondering when her sister's going to get up to raise the sun because she has a date. Yes. Say Celestia, because uh, Luna is impatient for her to raise the sun. So, once the <laughs> once the interaction finish, we go to the library where Stygian is taking a nap, and well, Luna goes to Stygian to talk about him about the project and what to do, but it seems that he is in Dreamland or sleeping soundly so princess luna has to scream to him to wake up and screaming in the library is bad so they get shushed by the 
What you call this? Librarians, yes. You don't shush a princess. I know. <laughs> but anywho, um, they discuss on what they have to do or who they want to recruit. And Stygian brings up that the contraption that they saw when they have to go in is based on how not really bad or good or evil or what. It's like your... What was the word they use? Their potential for being bad. Yes. So, recruiting the main six is a big no-no. Or even re- recruiting the pillars is a big no-no. So, um, Stygian suggests that, okay, we need to find a group of evildoers to help them with this task. So, I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think of the setup? Well, this is where the question of Luna's magic, because she can still ri- she can still raise them and lower the moon. She can still attempt to contact others in their dreams. So it seems like, but if we're to go with the premise that she's lost her magic due to Eris's, uh staff, well, we're in kind of a pickle there, aren't we? Mm-hmm. It's like someone's not being honest with us. And so the only way I can reconcile is to say that there are still some drops of magic left for her yeah i I, now that you mentioned that like yeah she still quote-unquote has her powers but i'm guessing she doesn't have her full capabilities probably but it really knocks you off for a little while but it's fun to see return of stygian as a, a planner and organizer as he says he is the one who gathered the team to defeat the sirens Mm-hmm. True that, true that. It was a lot of fun. And here, he. <laughs> this is pretty interesting when you see who is the person who assembled the team. We'll get into that soonish. Tara, what about you? Well, I do like. I, I, you know, actually, to be honest, I didn't even think about the whole Luna with her magic about raising the moonstone until Silver brought it up. But. I mean, he pretty much said it very well. But for me, I actually do like how the Sitchin was up all night, you know, basically being the planner and how he got the pillars of a question together. Now he's getting this team together. I also like, too, how at the end of the first comic where they're like, we're going to need some help from... I mean, they didn't specifically... Or maybe they did, but they said that they're going to get Twilight and the Pillars to help them out. But now here, they're like, oh, we can't get them to help us out. They're too good. So now it's like, oh, a twist. Now they're going to get someone else, to, some other people to help them out. That's a very nice, interesting twist. True, that, true, that. And okay, with that, let's carry on. So, Stygian's first suggestion is to recruit some... Let's see. Someone who can... out. Fox, a cert, a creature who's all about luck. So they go to Las Pegasus, and we hop into the Flim Flam Brothers uh, Casino slash hotel. And well, you would think that they are going to recruit the Flim Flam Brothers, which is kind of interesting. But oh no, 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 no! They're going to recruit some pony, or I should I say, some feline that's pretty cool and in all honesty i like this change i like the setup i like his shirt and well the first recruit is capper from the movie so yay this is fun i like this a lot somehow i am a big fan of capper Woohoo! so the princess goes up to capper trying to recruit him and i'm just gonna summarize this capper says okay you guys could have called me to attend a lot and I would have come. But no, uh, you coming here to Las Pegasus to talk to little me means that something that's, something is not above board. So what is it? He is very interested. He is very, very interested in what Luna has to offer. And with that, they show Kepper the plan and explains the situation. And, well, at first it seems like he wants to decline. But the Flim Flam brothers come in and, well, saying that he did a good job and whatnot. But somehow, Kepper says, oh, you know, the princess offered me a job for, well, she offered me a job and whatnot. And 
the Flim Flam brothers are doubling his pay, tripling his pay. But he says like, you know, boys, I have to do this job for beauty and country. So I'll be off. And Stygian says, oh, wow, um, I admire you passing all, uh, passing up all those bits for this. And, well, Kepler says like he likes the job because <laughs> uh, with this job at Los Pegasus, it's just more of a time filler. With this job, with what you guys are doing, that's the challenge. So I'm going to pause here. What do you guys think? Uh, Tara? Well, I do like how they set up for Capra because like, as soon as they're go- about to go through the curtains, we see pictures of Capra on the wall and then we see the name of his act, Cat Got Your Tongue. It's like, you know, he's a cat. That's kind of funny. And I like how like, when they introduce him, he mentions the one part where he's like, once they're drawn to the song you've written for them, you can convince them to buy anything you want. It's like, yeah, kind of like what you did in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so true. And I'm pretty sure the one moment that a lot of people are going to notice is when Capper is like, oh, I got to help these two ponies out. They need my service. And then you got the two ponies like, oh, you're working with Luna now? And the other one's like, I ship it. I ship it so much. <laughs> like, w- and I'm just like, wow. <laughs> I'm just thinking Silver's there. <laughs> so I, fa- I found my spirit animal. <laughs> I, th- I thought that was Sweetie Bloom's spirit animal. We can share. <laughs> But then I also like too how, the, um, you know, they're trying every flim and flam, are trying everything to keep him away. But Cap was like, "No, nope, sorry, can't do." <laughs> oh, true, 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 true. And Silver, what do you think? Well, I I admire anyone who can outdo the Flim Flam brothers. He he's pretty much the Flim and Flam if they had a conscience. <laughs> and I love that he sees through their very transparent lie. But he, he can figure it out all so That shows just how sharp he is. So this scene does a very effective job of establishing Capra's strengths and goals right away. But there's one thing that really uh, surprises me. When he's really laying, laying into Flim and Flam, he mentions that in addition to all the things that Luna's offering, uh, the ear of the princess... Let's see here. He'll have the ear of the princess when it comes to the liberation of his homeland. It's like, whoa... What's this now? What's this nugget? <laughs> I mean, the Storm King has literally gone to pieces. I'm assuming his army did the same, but maybe Abyssinia is still struggling with with uh, occupation. Probably. W- w- would it? Would that be something the ponies could assist with? A pony liberation of Ab- Abyssinia would be a great movie. True. Or oh, there's a civil war going on with the black and white. Cats. Racist. Yeah, really, Norman. I knew you were valiest, but now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just stating out stuff. The previous leader you have were all black- kinds of cysts. That sounds <laughs> weird. <laughs> I'm just stating out the obvious. The previous leader were black cats. Maybe a white cat would do better. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe a brown cat makes panda cats. Who knows? I'm sure you could look at the movie Cats when it comes out. Oh, God, no. Not that. <laughs> no. Uh, for that, I'm just... No, bad. Bad, Tara, bad. What do you mean bad? You're the one that started mentioning, you know, black and white and then cats and stuff like that. Why you guys gotta see everything in black and white? Yeah, why it's no gray? It's gray. Yeah, yeah. But this is a very effective and fun way to introduce Capra. And like I say, there's no... Uh, there's nothing like seeing Flim and Flam get out, uh, out, uh, schnookered. Mm-hmm. True that, true that. But in all honesty, what do you think of his, uh, both of you guys, his new outfit? I like it. I li- I think it's more humble than the cape we see in. I know Rarity gave him that, but this is him sort of cleaning up and being on a whole new lease of life. But really, everything in his design says how far he's come since the movie. True, true. And I also like it. It's it's really, really good. Tara? I really like it too. I mean, well, I didn't, wasn't really a fan of the whole cape thing, but I do like how he, uh, he's got that vest on and showing that, you know, he's not living on the streets and he's actually, you know, living a nice life and actually able to get some nice clothing on. <laughs> <laughs> true that, true that. So, anywho, uh, I'm going to move on. So, the next person they try to recruit... Hmm. Uh, they both discuss that, okay, going to the castle, there's going to be a lot of guards, there's a lot of resistance, so we need to probably have some muscle power. 
So they discuss or they come up with a, another pony for the job. But going to this location needs a lot of tech. So they head off to the Crystal Empire. And Stygian gives Sunburst some books for him to read. Uh, this is just a ruse because Luna is asking Princess Cadence about Tempest and where she is right now. And it seems that she is in the, what, borders, was it? Yeah, in the borderlands of the Crystal Empire working with Glitter, Glitter Drop, was it? Yes, Glitter Drops. Although, if they're in the borderlands, does that make her the new Claptrap? Oh, no. Well, I mean, now, is she working out, out on the Borderlands, or is she out playing Borderlands? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, boys. But anywho, they meet up with Tempest, and, well, they well they catch up, they talk a bit, and Princess, Princess Luna mentions that, ah, I'm glad that you and Glitter are getting along with each other, because you I, I see you guys in each other's dream. And Tempest just says, stop that. I don't like that. Stop that. <laughs> so we have what, Glitter here being a fangirl of Princess Luna and offering cider. I got no idea why cider. Because eh, maybe you guys can explain this later on. But she offers cider for the whole uh, crew. And Princess Luna suggests that hey, um, I should probably talk to Tempest alone. And Tempest says, nah, if anything you can say to me, you can say to uh, Glitter here. So uh, if you want to say anything, say it now. And you can clearly tell that Tempest here has changed, has really have a soft side for Glitter. So anyway, they explain the situation and Glitter says, oh, you change. You don't really need to throw yourself in front of danger and whatnot. But Tempo says, okay, this is the thing that I've been waiting for and this is kind of my, what you call this? I, I forgot, but yeah, this is what she needs to do. So I'm going to pause here. Uh, Terra, so did I left off with Terra or Silver? I forgot. Uh, you left off with me last time. <laughs> right. Anyway, Silver, so what do you think? I will join in Tempest in saying, as much as I do enjoy a good ship, uh, when someone invades my, observes my dreams, which is an incredibly private uh, space. I mean, it is literally the confines of your own mind. <laughs> it's would you not be okay? Creepy. <laughs> would Would you really be okay with someone looking at your dreams? That just sounds like a terrible invasion of privacy, and I see that in sci-fi and fantasy every now and again. And very few people ever seem to worry about it. Yeah, because the last time or the last horror movie I remember someone invading your dreams it ain't good well yeah I mean for all we know Norman could be dreaming about Bayonetta and Princess Luna will all of a sudden pop into his dreams and be creeped out by it it's like that what's with all the mayonnaise (laughs) (laughs) oh oh, no (laughs) Luna 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 no 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 but uh this is a fun reintroduction to Tempest. It we fought, this came out just after her two-parter, which was marvelously done, one of the best. It's fun to see them follow up on this and Tempest wanting to continue to well, make good in the world, trying to counterbalance everything she's done, maybe not to buy back uh anyone's good graces, but just to for her own morality. Oh, uh, this will, I remember something. Redeem, redeem herself. Yes. Redeem herself. But then who is she redeeming herself to? Because this is not going to be broadcasted. This is going to be kept on the down low. So Twilight and her friends won't know. Uh, the rest of Equestria won't know. This is Tempest more do- redeeming herself for herself. Yep. It's for her more, it's more for her, what you call this, consciences. Yeah. And I enjoy that. It's It's not worrying about public perception it's just what do i want to do mm-hmm. true that true that and tara well i kind of like to how um it's kind of not really a continuation i mean i guess it kind of is for tempest how you know she's uh, guess tr- trying to redeem herself but 
I mean, I know we talked about this already, but <laughs> I do like, though, how she's trying to redeem herself by, I guess, working with her friend because she hasn't seen her friend in a long time. And she's trying to spend more time with her and do all this ranger stuff out in the borderlands of the Crystal Empire, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I also have to agree with Silva about Princess Luna invading your privacy of dreams, you know? I mean, that's just messed up when you kind of think about it. <laughs> yeah, true that. So anyway, I'm going to carry on. So... Glitter Drop just mentions, okay, if Tempest here is busy fighting, who's going to back her up? And Princess Luna says, oh, we have a pony in mind. Uh, besides Tijun, um, I have another pony in mind. And they discuss on who they want to call out. So, technically, they try to think of a few ponies. Um, one of the few ponies that they mention is probably... Um, Starswell, but he's out. Twilight and Celestia, no, no, not, not at all, not at all. Uh, Sunset, oh, Sunset is a good pick, but nah, we, we don't need a second mirror problem. So yeah, she's out of the question. And then there's also Star at Glimmer, but yeah, she's a bit too close to Twilight. So nah, that's not good. But Luna has an idea. You, you mentioned Starlight. So she's best friend with a certain pony. And, well, this certain pony is having a show in Yakistan, which the art here is awesome because I don't remember seeing them having this kind of architecture before. And, well, the pony that they are going to recruit is the great and powerful Trixie. And, well, five minutes later, they got chased off by the X. I got no idea. Why? But it seems that Trixie performed a spell that was very, very grotesque. And, well, they talk about it for a bit. And, well, Trixie says, yes, I'll join you guys, whatever you want. Let's get it. get me out of here before there's no nothing to <laughs> recruit me for. So, Stygian teleports them to safety. So, yay, much awesomeness. And, well, I'm going to ask you guys again. What do you think, Tara? Well, I do like how, you know, I, I for me, I wasn't even expecting Trixie to make an appearance. I, th- I actually thought it was going to be, like, Starlight. I mean, when she said One Last Pony, but then they mentioned Starlight. It's like, oh, who is this going to be? I am very curious. And then it's like Trixie, and it's like, oh, yeah, I actually wasn't expecting that. And then, you know, Trixie being the usual self with all the flashy fireworks and everything like that. And then, you know, just usual make up make people upset and then an angry mob starts chasing you <laughs> <laughs> that is her ammo what about you silver i do want to know what did trixie do with that spell i mean to be called grotesque uh why would you even make that spell it's like that's kind of like why would you post that <laughs> well trixie's answer for this is always like uh i wonder if i could do this and well she just do it because she she just wonders. Yeah. I just find the perversion funny. Eh. Mostly, I just appreciate that Trixie expresses a desire to be included, that no one ever thinks to bring her along on these uh, mission trips, which is why I, I'm betting she pro- she may protest, but she loved running from the cockatrices with Starlight and Sunburst during uh, student counseling. I'm finally involved! <laughs> <laughs> True that, true that. Which probably makes her the the easiest cr- recruit. <laughs> well, being an outsider, suddenly being included, so that's always fun for her. You think they would recruit Discord, though? Um, no. He can't keep his mouth shut. That <laughs> and also because he is a embodiment of chaos, and if they go to, or if he pops into the other world, Ares is sure going to notice. So that's why I think they don't even consider him for the job. But anywho, with that, let's move on to the next scene. And it seems that, well, all the recruits are there and Stygian explains the plan. So they're going to have Kapper steal the orb from Ares. And then Tempest is going to be the muscle just in case something bad happens. And Trixie is going to be the distraction. So, yay, much awesomeness. But Trixie has a very important question. And said question is, 
What are they going to name their team? Trixie proposed Trixie and the Illusions. And Tempest just says, why would we need a name? Sorry, why would we name it if it's supposed to be a secret? And Capper just says, I've always been partial to the word squad. You know, some kind of suicide squad. And Stygian just mentions the last team I named tried to banish me. So, yeah, no. And he asks Princess Luna if she has a team name for them. And yes, she proposed the team name Nightmare Knights. Yeah, how about that? And, well, this exchange is going to be fun. Uh, I suggest people reading it for themselves. But long story short, Tempest just says, wait, there's a holiday about nightmares? And I think Twilight mentioned to me something about it. And wait, that Luna? Yeah. So long story short, we get a short history lesson about Nightmare Nights. Yay. So with that, they're already almost going. And Kepper just says, okay, now we need disguises. Yeah. So let's disguise ourselves and go to the mirror world. And, <laughs> oh boy, this is fun. Uh, once we are in the other world, we get to see Princess Luna as Starry Night Terror. And we get Stygian as the Dark Horse. Horsey? No, it's the Dark Horse. All right, Dark Horse. And Capper as Reaper. Yes. I'm just going to call him Reaper because he looks like Reaper. And oh, no, that's black. You're thinking Black Watch Reyes. Yeah. But he's not Reaper yet. Yeah. True. But same costume. And I will out nerd you on this. <laughs> All right. So uh, we got Tempest Shadow as Maelstrom Shade. And the great and powerful Trixie as the great and powerful Roxy. Hmm. Trixie. Much awesomeness. So. Once they pass through, Kipper just have to say, how did you two ever made it as villains? What kind of made up name are Maelstrom and Roxy? And yeah, Tempest's answer is, I just disseminate anyone who opposed me. Or do you not remember? Which is true. <laughs> Before they go into the casino, Kipper just have to say this. Oh, well, how bad could it be? And on the last page, he discovers that, oh, goodness me, there is a room full of supervillains. That ain't good. Ain't good at all. And book ends here. So I'm going to ask you guys what you think and also final thoughts. Uh, Tara, what about you? Well, I do like how they got their whole team together and talking about a plan. And then that one little moment where Luna just talks to the camera and goes, what about Nightmare Nights? And she's got the smile on her face, just like, eh? eh? Yeah. <laughs> and even the font, too, of Nightmare Nights, it's the same as the cover, so you know they're referencing that. Yeah, it, it's like, what, um, Star Wars, the um, what Last Jedi, something like that? They, they have to put in The Last Jedi. Yeah, somewhere. exactly. <laughs> And then I love I love the way their disguises are, it's, and I just love how Stitchin's like the dark horse, and that's clearly a reference to the Dark Knight. True that. Because <laughs> you know he's like I'm the hoofbeat under the floorboards, and he's like I'm the shadow. <laughs> it's like yeah, that's definitely a reference. Yeah, like I said, I like how they're designed, and I like some of the nicknames. Although for a capper, I some, he could have been the cat burglar instead of the alley cat. Eh, true. It's something cool, but. Eh. Yeah, but in, I, I like how they set it up, and I like how it ends, and it ends on a good note where it's like, ooh, another suspenseful moment. What's going to happen? To be continued. True that, true that. And we get to see some of the quote-unquote villains. Yeah, some quote-unquote villains. Some have already been reformed, some are not. I'm actually curious about one. I'm not sure who this is. I'm pretty sure you guys can help me out with that. Who's that smoke figure uh, in between Sombra and one of the Shadow Bolts? That is uh, issue 5 to 8. Was it, Silva? Yep, the Nightmare Rarity Arc. Mm -hmm. huh. He is one of the Nightmare Forces that lived on the moon. Ah, okay. I think his name was Gary. Oh, probably. Gary. Yeah, Gary. Oh, Gary's a jerk. 
I actually do like how they even have the pair of sprites in there. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, that's well, it for me on that segment. Well, but what about the comic overall? The comic overall, I I really enjoyed it. It's like I said, it's basically a setup to I guess you could say like a heist mission, which is not bad. You get to see like you know them recruiting all these different people you wouldn't expect them to recruit. You think they would recruit like the main six of the pillars, but as they said before, they can't. Which is kind of a good twist that you need to recruit all these people who used to be villains. And I like that twist. And it builds up the suspense, especially when they go into the skies and you see at the end they're inside. But then they're like, oh, uh, uh, how bad could it be? And then you see that all the villains like, I shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, then. Anyway, um, Silver, what do you think? Well, I like that Luna is trying to add a certain legitimacy to all these characters. I mean, they are... They've been the outskirts, but here she is. She's dubbing them her knights, which is a very, well, romanticized title. So there's an air of legitimacy and also a way to bring them all together rather quickly, as the biggest thing working against this team is that they have had no time to practice or get to know one another or to figure out their each one another's strengths. So they're going into this very divided. This is not like Twilight and her team who pretty much instantly rallied. Or uh, Starlight's team, which had sort of a personal stake. All of these are coming in for very disparate reasons, and that's going to create conflict. I especially like Trixie, who continually rejects the idea. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to accept your labels. <laughs> you can call you call me a villain, but I don't accept that. Everyone else is kind of carrying this weight of what they used to be, or or the wrongs they committed. She just wants to be included and refuses to be. <laughs> To be categorized by your objective hypocritical morality. <laughs> but in, in all honesty, right, is Trixie a villain? She did seal Ponyville under a dome and put the mayor in a birdcage. I definitely think she's towing the line. Yeah, but that's because of the Alicorn amulet's influence. Oh, but did the amulet impose those feelings or just give them free reign? Hmm. True, true. So that's the big thing. But Trixie is probably the either heavily in denial or, good lord, her worldview is unique. <laughs> Let's hope she's in denial because if her worldview is unique, that is much more scary. Like I say, this is this is a prep uh, issue. It is getting the group together and preparing their uh, preparing their the heist. But that's the most boring part of the a heist movie you need to actually do the heist and see what goes right, what goes wrong. Mm -hmm. And that will be in issue three then. So I would say this is the least interesting issue in terms of story, but we do get to see the characters coming together, which is its own fun. And as for me, I like this. Um, I, I like the set. I, I like the interaction that they have where they just... <laughs> uh... The first line that Stijan just says, "We've been over, uh, we've been over this with every pony, but uh, let's do it one more time." Like, why would you want to say this again, Stijan? I thought every pony heard about it, but it's a nice way to kind of include us into the conversation. Uh, I, I just find that fascinating. Are you sure they're just pulling an early version of Into the Spider Verse? Okay, let's do this one more time. <laughs> Probably. Who knows? But no, I, I do like the interaction because the naming convention that they have, like having Nightmare Nights, yes. Um, but you mentioned before, Silver, has yes, a very romanticized way, but a very smart way to insert the title of the uh, issue into the script. So yeah, that's much fun. And the history lesson about Nightmare Nights, that's a lot of fun, especially for uh, Tempest who have not celebrated it at all, which is kind of strange. You would have thought that she would celebrate it once in her life when she was younger. Maybe they were in a really backwards town. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and, and Kepper, like his outfit, damn, that's cool. I like it. I can dig it. It should be the cat burg burglar. <laughs> <laughs> probably. But yeah, and th this comic, like you mentioned before, is just the setup. Like, it's going to be a bit dull with how they are going to get there but in the end it's a lot of fun i i do like the setup here where they recruit the ponies or cats or whatever it is creatures just so that they can 
try to infiltrate the castle. And with not much prep time, like what, this is just the other day that they got kicked out of the portal and whatnot. So you have to assume that security is going to be tighter than before. And well, we'll probably see the result in issue 3 of what they're going to do. But still, I, I do like it. I do like it a lot. And with that, well, coming ends. So, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's review? Well, I believe it's time to get all quizzical as we talk about a trivial pursuit. Oh, God. Ooh. Oh, my. I Yeah, oh, God. This is going to be one of those episodes where I'm going to say it's just okay, isn't it? Well, don't give away the review now. I mean, we want people to tune in. Yeah, true. Yeah, they they got to study for the quiz, Norman. Yeah, true, true, true. But if you see, what, a uh, film theory about how to play Jeopardy, you go for the big ones first. I'm sorry, Norman, that's just the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So, anywho, yes, in next week's review, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 16. A Trivial Pursuit. So, yeah, that'll be something interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I need to rewatch it to see what, what I really think about it. It's been so long. So, anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? They can find me on Twitter and TV now under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on YouTube just through a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact. On Patreon, I am known, I go by MLP Silver Quill. And Kofi, it's just Silver Quill, all one word. And you can catch me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday, uh, posting either a comic review or editorial. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or instead, they could just do a simple Google search and they'll find me on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. Wait, do you have a coffee? I am thinking about that. I haven't done it yet, but uh, I've been thinking about it. Ah, uh, all right, all right. Anyway, um, also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And stitch your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on punkyflive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Quill. And I am Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the S Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, we're not gonna get any of the real villains in this comic? Well, I thought of a villain name for myself. I would call myself Tank the Terrible. Oh, uh, that's a terrible name. Yeah, it's in the title Terrible. <laughs> yeah, see? Uh, truth be never, I think. <laughs>